Hello, everybody. My name is Graham L. You are watching The Political Vigilante. Um, happy 2018. Uh, I want to talk about an article that Glenn Greenwald put in The Intercept on December 30th. Basically, Facebook says it is deleting accounts at the direction of the U.S. and Israeli governments. And it's a very interesting and thorough article, of course, and it's all about how uh, two governments are forcing Facebook to, to censor. And what, um, <clears throat> what has happened uh, is that uh, Facebook met with the Israeli government and took down a bunch of pro-Palestinian Facebook accounts. And you might say, well, you know, if they're, if they're pro-Palestinian and then maybe they're preaching, you know, terrorism or um, violence to the Israelis or whatever, then yeah, we should, we should take them down. Here's the problem, is there are a bunch of pro-Israeli accounts um, saying, calling for the death of Palestinians and the death of Arabs. None of those are being taken down at all. So that's now, we're, now we're getting into censorship. If you're gonna say, hey, I wanna kill this group, we don't want that on Facebook, okay, fine, then they all come down. Then they all, if you just want to say, oh, no, we're going to get rid of hate speech on Facebook, then they all should come down. And when Facebook starts taking orders from the Israeli government, and as I go into later in this article, I'll go into it from the United States government, that's a problem. You really trust the internet to be run by Netanyahu and Trump? Because those are who are running those two governments. Um, Here's, I'll give you some stats here. Um, so the uh, Facebook representatives were meeting with Israeli government, this is in September of last year, to determine which Facebook accounts of Palestinians should be deleted on the ground that they constituted incitement. The meetings called for and presided over by one of the most extremist and authoritarian Israeli officials, pro settlement Justice Minister, Aliyat Shakid came after Israel threatened Facebook that its failure to voluntarily comply with Israeli de deletion orders would result in the enactment of laws requiring Facebook to do so upon pain of being severely fined or even blocked in Israel. So this is what happened. Um, Israeli Justice Minister uh, said Tel Aviv had submitted 158 requests to the social media giant over the previous four months asking it to remove content deemed incitement. Uh, Facebook had granted 95% of the requests. Um, here's what Glenn Greenwald says. What makes this censorship particularly consequential is that 96% of Palestinians said their primary use of Facebook was for following news. That means that Israeli officials have virtually unfettered control over a key communication forum of Palestinians. And part of it is, as, as I'm learning and I'm seeing, like um, I saw an Abby Martin interview with an Israeli soldier, a former Israeli soldier that is now against the Israeli government's occupation of Palestine, calling it uh, an apartheid, is it's about the misinformation that Hamas controls all of Palestine and they're terrorists and if they weren't such, and Hamas only controls a small part of it. So we're not getting that news accurately here in America. The Israelis certainly aren't getting any accurate news. So Facebook is a place where people are reporting on accurate news. Like I'm here in Palestine. This is what this is what's happening, showing exactly what's really happening. When I was a, a guest, you know, this is probably eight months ago on Aggressive Progressive, and Jimmy interviewed um, uh, a Jewish man from Canada and a Palestinian in a cave, talking about what was actually happening. It was like, wow, when would this this these two would never be interviewed on mainstream media? So this is why this is significant. Is if people are getting some information on Facebook because it's actually being posted by people who were there and now the government is, the Israeli government is censoring it, that's censorship. And that's not letting a certain viewpoint come out.
Now, if people are posting, you know, kill all the Israelis, obviously that's bad. But if they're just posting, hey, this is what happened. This is what this Israeli soldier did. This is what, you know, that information needs to be out there. Um, and again, I have friends of mine who are, have children in the Israeli army. I have friends of mine who are very pro-Israel. So this isn't some like, I've got some ax to grind. I'm just about the truth. And I'm just about calling out oppressive governments like the United States is a very oppressive government. Um, and I've worked for the United States government. I've been hired by them to tell jokes. So uh, I just want the truth, man. And I don't like censorship. And this is, this is, this is, this is not a good tactic. Um, so, um, Here's some of the groups that, uh, and this is from a 2016 report from the Palestinian Center for Development and Media Freedoms detailed how extensive the Facebook censorship was. Um, here's pages and personal accounts that were filtered and blocked. Palestinian Dialogue Network, PLADF.net, Gaza Now, Jerusalem News Network, Shabib Agency, Radio Bethlehem 2000, Orient Radio Network page, um, Ramallah News, Journalist uh, Huzifa Jamus from Abdu Dis, activist Kasim Badir, activist Muhammad G uh, Ganam. I mean, it just goes on and on. All these, all of these journalists and stuff. Okay, and yet then uh, calls by Israelis for killing of Palestinians are commonplace on Facebook and largely remain undisturbed. And in this article, which I'll put, it's in link below, you'll see these actual posts that um, one study found uh, that Al Jazeera reported last year, uh, 122,000 users directly called for violence with words like murder, kill, or burn. Arabs were the number one recipients of hateful comments, yet there appears to be little effort by Facebook to censor any of that. See, that's the problem. If, you, if Facebook wants to say across the board, anyone says they want to kill or hurt some other group, we're taking it down. Okay, fine, but you can't just then do it for one group and not the other. Um, and now here's how the United States government has done its censorship. So. Uh, earlier in the week, the, the Facebook deleted the Instagram accounts of Ramzan uh, Kadyrov, who is a repressive, brutal, and authoritarian leader of the Chechen Republic. He has a combined 4 million followers on all, on all of the accounts. Um, I'll just read you what, what uh, Greenwald says. To put it mildly, uh, Kadyrov who was given free reign to rule the province in exchange for ultimate loyalty to Moscow is the opposite of a sympathetic figure. He has been credibly accused of a wide range of horrific human rights violations from the imprisonment and torture of LGBTs to the kidnapping and killing of dissidents. But none of that dilutes how disturbing and dangerous Facebook's rationale for its deletion of his accounts is. A Facebook spokesperson told the New York Times that the company deleted those accounts not because he's a mass murderer and tyrant, but that Mr. Kedov's accounts were deactivated because he had just been added to the United States sanctions list and that the company was legally obliged to act. That's what's dangerous. So the U.S. just put somebody on a list and now they're, all their accounts are blocked? This guy's an awful person, obviously. But how they did it, it that's what that's what's Greenwald is pointing out, and rightfully so, in my opinion, what's scary. Because... Let's talk about this. What if Iran decided to impose sanctions on Chuck Schumer for a support of Trump's policy of recognizing Jerusalem as the Israeli capital? Facebook would never delete the accounts of the Democratic Party Senate minority leader. Just as Facebook would never delete the accounts of Israeli officials who incite violence against Palestinians or who are sanctioned by Palestinian officials. Just last month, Russia announced retaliatory sanctions against various Canadian officials and executives, but needless to say, Facebook took no action to censor them or block their accounts. Would Facebook ever dare censor American politicians or journalists who use social media to call for violence against American enemies? And he shows a post 
uh, to show our resolve, we may have to sink an Iranian ship. So all the people calling for a war for the American war machine to go, now it's Iran, all North Korea, right? We're not going to censor them. So this article um, is, is pretty poignant and it shows how we really don't have a lot of um, free speech. We don't have a lot of journalistic freedom. I've talked about this before, getting rid of net neutrality. This is the internet is the last place where you can say what you want to say and have, it a, have a viable opinion and challenge those that are in power and challenge governments like the United States and Israeli governments. Both of those governments do not recognize the Armenian genocide. When the Turkish government slaughtered millions of Armenians in World War I, it was a full-on genocide. The Turks government's just like, oh, hey, people died during war. No, no, no. It was a systematic genocide of an entire race of people. It was so um, efficient that the Nazis looked to that. They were like, well, look what the Turks did in World War I. We're gonna use that same playbook for the Jews in World War II. The Israeli government won't acknowledge that. So if you're pro-Israel, you need to look and ask yourself, is the Israeli government really um, a benevolent government or are they just power and part of the empire? And if you really peel it back, it's all about oil and military. That's what this is about. The American empire and its allies getting its money and its power. It's not about free speech. It's not about taking care of its people. It's about taking care of its corporate interests. That's what this is about. So if you want the side of truth, you want the side of what's just, then you need to look at all of the governments and challenge them and say, this isn't right. And get some information. Look to the people within Israel that are like, hey, this isn't right. Look to those people. If you're just like, Graham, you're, if you're Israeli and you're like, Graham, you're a dumb American, you don't understand the situation. Okay, I've never been there. I'm just looking at people who are there, who have been there, who are like, this ain't right. When I hear Israelis who served in the Israeli army saying, this isn't right, that's when I start, that's when I start asking questions. And when I see governments acting like they're abusing their power like the American government does on a daily basis, when I see 130 people die every day in Yemen, you might say, what does Yemen have to do with any of this? Yemen has a very key part of this because it shows you we are letting the Saudis do this. We are letting the Saudis commit these atrocities. We are supporting them. They are using our weapons that they buy from us. They bought them from Trump. They bought them from Obama. This is all about the petrodollar. And I'm on the side of truth. I'm on the side of justice. And I don't want to see people get mistreated by any government anywhere. Because if they can do it to that group, they can do it to me. And they could do it to you. So stop with the, the, I'm just lining up. I'm born this, or I was this religion, or I'm from here. So I just got to line up with this team no matter what. Uh-uh. Question everything. Question everything. Okay? I was born Catholic. I was, you know, I was raised Catholic. I was, oh, Irish Catholic. Sorry, I don't, I'm not going to blindly follow the Catholic Church because that's my team. Nope. No way. Not going to do it. I was told that, you know, the Kennedy family, they're flawless. Mm, no, they're not. JFK did some good things. Bobby tried to do some good things, but they also had a lot of corruption. Joe Kennedy, very corrupt guy. And I'm not going to just say, side with that. I'm not going to blindly follow the United States government because I just like waving the flag. Sorry, I'm not going to do that. I've seen the military machine in, 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 in all of its uh, operational glory. And I've seen the money involved. And when there's that much money involved, people are profiting from war. People are profiting from it. People are profiting from plundering the earth. And all of this is connected. And all of this needs to be questioned. And all of this needs to change. Thanks for watching.